So I clicked new stream. Oh gosh, the camera is not going. Um, hold on, let's fix this. Okay, sorry, this is what I see. And wait, is this not working? Did I turn off the camera? Turn it back on. Oh gosh, a uh, video capture device. Is that what this is? No. Oh, haha, there we are. Okay, let's make this uh, me but small. Ah, perfect. Okay. So I can always edit that. So, what are we doing today? What's up, fam? Uh, I am going to, one, I'm going to post this up on the YouTubes, on the, on the Instagrams really quickly. I have been, uh, I got some results from my research, and I want to, well, uh, preview them. Uh, let me actually make chat pop out so that way I can see it over my uh, chat thing. Well, I don't know why it's so, okay, there we go. It's, like it's, it's forcing itself to be like extraordinarily fat, and I have no idea why. Um, let's just remove the stats. Okay, cool. So you should be able to see all this. Um, let me then go into my Steam Deck, Stream Deck, Stream Deck. Uh, yeah, but I have some really good results um, that I have been. Let me change this uh, to, no, I don't, remind me later. Um, is it profile one that I like? No, profile two. I believe so, yes. Okay, perfection. Um, yeah. Okay, so, so I have chat here. Um, maybe I can just put this here. Oh, I think Job is going to join us. We got a cat over the weekend. Uh, and I am very excited for that. Okay, so let me show you what I've been working with. Um, and now I'm a little concerned that QGIS closed. So, I badly need to write uh, <laughs> for my thesis uh, but um, so this is sort of a, a way to do that but yeah uh, let me see here okay so do 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 do, do project open recent Mesoamerican provinces uh, I just I just uploaded a bunch of stuff in this UGIS to make this a little bit easier for me to visualize uh, so I'll walk through this in just one second uh, while I um, do 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 this, hey, we are live on the interwebs on the YouTube's. Uh, gonna go through my results and write out everything that you see here. Okay, cool. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna do live streaming again. Uh, it's been a while since I've actually done these streams um, for various reasons, realistically. Um, oh, that's annoying. The chat isn't on top, so it has to stay. Ah, here we go. Um, I guess that'll work. Okay. Okay. And then let me grab the link uh, so that people on the Instas can see it. Oh my gosh. Okay. Okay. Um, share. Copy link. Boom. Done and done. But yeah. So, oh, that's not it. That's not a link. Uh, do, 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 do link boom paste boom done okay cool beans cool sure uh what email works and send over sure cool so yeah so these are some of my results and what i've done is okay so this is just a terrain map of the world. Uh, this is just from Esri, and if you're curious, I am working in uh, QGIS, which is just free GIS, free and open source. Um, it's so nice. It's so 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 nice. So you could download this right now without needing a university or or anything like that. Um, but I have also included these uh, biogeographic regions. So these are from this author called Marone. Uh, and he has done various biogeographical things, mainly uh, the ones that I'm using are his regions of the Neotropical Realm. These actually go all through South America, but I've cropped it. Uh, and then also he did a set more recently for Mexico. Um, now, my study area actually goes into the U.S. a little bit because I don't delineate based on purely political borders. 
but uh, my results are these ones right here. So let me remove the regions so we can have a simple view. So these are phylogenetic regions. Basically, they are inferred regions of shared evolutionary history. Uh, for I have a series of them for all the amphibians of Mesoamerica and all the reptiles of Mesoamerica. Now, uh, that's that's just what what I have. So, to make this a little simpler, it'd be saying like uh, all the herps that are in region seven, or in this case, these are the squamates, so your snakes and lizards. Uh, all of them in region seven, uh, they are having they, they have shared evolutionary history. Uh, so they are all clustered together like so. Uh, versus I also have them for amphibians. Let me show you that one. Uh, so again, uh, they're sharing evolutionary history altogether. And what I'm doing right now is in my Notion, let me show you this. So this is Notion, this is where I handle all my research, this is where I keep track of everything, what I need to do, all my writing. So this is my thesis right here. This is one of my chapters. Um, yeah, it just lives in here. And what I'm doing is I'm going through and saying uh, region one represents what regions and kind of some notes about it. Uh, there's gonna be lots of typos. I do not give a fuck because right now I'm just writing. Um, but yeah, so kind of my goal for today is to do this type of write-up for all of the uh, squamates. So yesterday I did all the amphibians, um, but now I want to do the squamates and then start to talk about them a little bit more. And then if we have time, if I have the motivation, uh, I'll start up the write-up for the ancestral area reconstruction, which is a whole other thing. But I really need to get this down first. Um, there's a lot I need to do still. I still need to update the intro, need to update the methods quite a bit. Um, there's still a decent amount, but I need to get these results out so that I can start writing the discussion. Uh, my thesis is two chapters. This is one of them. Uh, maybe three if I have time. Probably won't have time. So yeah, so really all we're doing today is I'm going to click on this one. So this is using uh, the Sorensen's index to figure out phylogenetic history. And uh, basically what that means uh, is that I have Sorensen's and Jacquard's. Jacquard's more heavily favors uh, endemism. It is really all it is in smaller ranges. Uh, it, it just gives more on that. Uh, now, Meow. come here, Java. Java. No, okay, whatever. You do you, boo boo. But uh, yeah, I am needing to, um, I need some help. I need to calm down, so. Not calm down, not freaking out, but yeah. So. Uh, do, 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 do. Yeah, but uh, yeah, so these results are, you know, years in the making now. A lot of it was just figuring out how to do all this stuff. It's it's crazy knowing that if I wanted to redo this study from scratch nowadays, I could do all this in like a couple of weeks, realistically. Um, I'm really big on building up your data and building up your skills so that you can just build off one another. So like all the scripts that I've used for this study, I'm putting into an R package. So if you need to clean GBIF data or do some other analyses, you can do that. But um, yeah, it's going to be pretty chill. I'm going to get some uh, headphones in just a second. That way I can listen to some music. Uh, I want to eventually do a way to, I don't know, this is a really good opportunity, uh, this chat. If, if you're just watching and you're not really sure what a live stream is, um, you know, pop me on in the background. Uh, turn on your own music. That, that's the reason why I'm not adding music to my streams. Think of this as like, we're all working together. That's kind of what I want this to be. So if you're another grad student, if you're a scientist, if you're just trying to do it, think of it as uh, we're sitting in the same lab, working together. And then uh, bouncing ideas off each other and I'll be here for a few hours. So <coughs> probably until lunchtime and then I'll switch to some other activities. And uh, maybe if we're getting blessed today, we will have Java join us. So yeah, Java, the pretty little kitty. Uh, but yeah. So, and for reference, this is just hemp, um, so <coughs> CBD flower. It's same species as cannabis, um, but it has no THC, so no head high, just body and anxiety and stuff. What's up, cat cat? What's up, cat cat? 
you're not that fat, but you're cute, so you're fat. Um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, so I actually, let me just re-reference what I was talking about. Uh, I actually use the CBD quite a bit for joint pain, uh, joint pain, but it has the secondary effect of helping with anxiety. So this is super interesting. Um, let me, let me get set up. Oh, so I found this amazing data visualizer, okay? Uh, so this is Earth Viewer from H uh, HHMI Biointeractive. And what it does is it shows you all the tectonic plates at different time scales. And it's just an easy slider, tells you how much oxygen's in the atmosphere, how much CO2. Um, and I was using this because there's this really interesting thing I discovered late last night. Um, so if we look at the amphibians, okay? So these are my amphibian regions. They're a little bit messier than the squamates. Let's actually look at, um, yeah, let's just do Sorensen's. So they're a little bit messier. Uh, they're not perfect, you know, by any means, uh, but there are some really cool things here. So I was looking uh, down here. And yeah, there's some really messy little regions. It's kind of whatever, you know, it's just, it is what it is. And I was looking at it with these bioregions overlaid and just saying that, oh, okay, uh, region right here, uh, region number 10 is mainly in the, uh, I think this is the yeah, Kawaka province, I might be mispronouncing, but this one goes in between uh, the Sierra Madre, no, no, not Sierra Madre, uh, the uh, Co Cordillera, Oriental and Cordillera Occidental, which is a part of the Northern Andes, right? So just basically that's what we're gonna be doing today. Um, so this one is mainly on the Occidental, uh, kind of in between the Oriental, but not really. So I need to actually update that. But anyways, sorry, what I was getting into is that down here in Western Ecuador and Peru, I think these bioregions are the yeah, Ecuadorian province is really what's here. And a little bit up here, you see this purple one. This purple one is number two region number two. Now what's weird about that to, to me, region number two is actually up here. Region number two represents the Chihuahuan Desert, Mexico, Sierra Madre Occidental, Sierra Madre Oriental, that, that type of area, right? Sonoran as well. I thought that was kind of fucking weird. I was like, whoa, they, that's all the way down here. Like they're clustering together. This is for amphibians. So I went to the Earth Viewer and I was like, okay, well, let me just let me just think. I have an idea as to what's going on. So let's look at uh, let's look at Lima. Okay, so this is roughly the same area. So Lima, Peru. Um, if we go back in time to around, let's see here. Let's see where was the time scale that I liked that shows this well. So Pangaea formed at around uh, 300 million years ago. And at around the, this thing is a little bit slow to update, around this time, what you actually will notice, and I know it's a little bit hard to tell on this visualization, but various parts of Mexico, which are represented here, you can see Texas right here, so south that is Mexico, were actually right butted up against modern day Lima. So modern day Mexico was actually butting up against modern day Lima. And then as it, uh, as time went on, the tectonics moved. Yeah, so this one really shows them like pretty close to where modern day is. You can start to see, I think this will end up becoming Panama down here. It basically just like slid up against it. So you can see up here now Mexico's forming off. Some parts of uh, Panama are coming down. And I was like, that's kind of interesting. So region two is clustering with down here, nothing in between, but all the way down here. And three, between 300 and 200 million years ago, they were actually right up against one another. So it's like, oh, that's pretty cool. Then I was looking at my squamates. Okay, so let's not look at amphibians. Let's look at our uh, reptiles for this study. And I did not get that messiness at all. Like if I add in, um, where, where are my layers not showing? Yeah, single labels, cluster. Yeah, so you'll see it's its its, its own thing. Ecuador's its own thing, which is kind of what we expect. I'm not getting that weird funkiness of up here coming down here. And I was like, why is that? You know, I kind of, my thought process was that 
Well, maybe the, um, oops, I don't want to make the labels opaque. Uh, maybe the, the, the data is weird and there's a lot of species from South America uh, that are not represented here. So it just creates some, you know, some, some weird shit basically. Um, well, I didn't notice that with the squamates. Here's a cool fucking thing that I want to investigate further. The squamates, okay, let's start actually, the amphibians. So amphibians, evolutionarily speaking, came into existence about 300 something million years ago, 300, 330 million years ago. Cool. So that actually puts them, you know, right down here. Like when Mexico and uh, Ecuador were kind of butted up against another and during the era of Pangaea. Cool. I was like, oh, that, that kind of explains, that makes a little sense. Squamates don't show that pattern. Squamates arose 160 million years ago. So, when the Squamates first arose, the early ancestors of Squamates, they were already around here. Where they weren't even close to Lima, right? They were pretty far away, and then over time they just really diverged even farther. There was no uh, change at all. So what I'm thinking is there might be some stem amphibian groups that are represented uh, representatives of basically this era, this time frame. Um, so there was one in particular where it looked really good, but of course they don't have great resolution. I think it was like around here. Yeah, so around here. Yeah, it's kind of showing it. So I'm like, maybe that's there. I don't even really know how to investigate that, but uh, hey, we did it. Okay. So let me show you exactly how I am doing this. Um, there isn't anything fancy that I'm doing. Let me turn on some uh, music. Uh, I need some good music for this. Uh, what was I looking up? Oh, I was trying to get, yeah, so all of this, um, what did I, oh, I meant to get YouTube. Um, all of this uh, should be good. Let's do Stone Rebel. I mean, that's always good. It is playing through the wrong thing. So let me, does it not, did it not, oh, I need to connect my headphones. Uh, Stone Rebel is a really good rock band, by the way, if you are interested in that. Um, let's do this again, okay, sound core, let me connect to these headphones. It says connected, but I haven't heard anything, so. Um, it says they're connected. Okay, we're good. This is also a weird thing. So I noticed, uh, I was like, these headphones kind of suck. I get really bad audio quality. I found out on a headset, they're really bad. But on the headphones, really good. So I, I, the headset is including the microphone. I think it was like playing through some mic feedback thing. So it wasn't, I don't know, but I was like, holy shit, I thought these were bad, uh, but they are not. Okay, what is going on? I don't want this. What is this? I don't want to see more. I want to do the opposite of that. Okay. Let me also delete all of my downloads at the bottom. I got a little emulator to play some games. So. Okay, ooh, let me also send an email really quickly. Um, but yeah, we'll be going into this really quick. Uh, let me pull the email over to here. Um, okay, cool. And then I'm just going to uh, send a, I need to send a file over really quickly. Sorry, just someone asking for a file that I need to send, uh, or want to send, I guess is maybe a better word. Uh, let me just get the right files and send that over. Um, wait, is this the right one? Oh 
my gosh, uh, cancel, is it not this one? No, not that one. Um, um, I think it's this one. Yeah, it's that one. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Okay, sorry about that. I always need to send stuff and I just forget to, if I don't do it in the moment, I will forget. Um, boom. And. Man, perfect. Okay. So. Just sent. Sunglasses emoji. Making sure that comes. To... Uh. Okay, so now let's just get into the results. Um, I will show you exactly what I'm doing on this. So I think what I'm gonna do, I'm actually working on getting a third screen up. Uh, so that way I can show you, uh, like, cause I have OBS open right now. Good. Thought I heard something weird. Um, yeah, so I just have Notion up in another screen. And I will, let's actually do it like this. So we'll see how much screen space this needs. I could take off the layer styling at the very least. Yeah, okay. So this isn't too big of a deal. Okay. I wanna make sure you can actually see what I'm writing as well. So this is, which one am I looking at? I'm looking at the Squamates Jacquard. <laughs> So really all I'm doing is just saying what a region region one represents um, represents the Sonoran Desert, the Californian province, and Baja California. Um, so Mike's writing style is to write drunk at it sober. I, I don't give a fuck about wording or anything until the very end. Oh, I need to add EPA eco regions to this. I really need to. Okay. Let me see. <coughs> oh, wait. Cancel, 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 cancel. Let me. I should have a layer somewhere. Um, it should be in. Let's do this. Okay. Boo, 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 boo. I believe I have them. No. It might actually be in here. Ah. Can I open up this shape file? I just want to see what it looks like. Yeah. So, does this have any attributes that I can use? It does. Uh huh. Oh. This is even better. I'm not even sure where this is from, not gonna lie. Um, but so then let me, okay, so let's add some labels. Okay, that's one. Let's add some coloring. Categorized, do, 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 do. Uh, random colors. Let's do it on a spectral. Uh, we will do it based off of the name, classify, 
Okay, apply, done there. And then we will now add the labels. So let's just double click that, labels, single labels based on LA2 name, yeah. Okay, apply, cool. Okay, so yeah, I'm just deciding on what I want to call this. So they call these warm deserts. This is going to be the Sonoran uh, with Baja, California. But then why does it... Uh, it lists out all of these. So let me do a feature selection. Uh -huh. I'm just going to delete these deserts. I'm just trying to clear things up. Uh-huh. Okay, also, these uh, I might want to keep. I'll, I'll keep these for now, but really what I was trying to get was this, uh, and then just some other descriptors for this northern extent. Um, so, yeah, save layer edits. I don't give a fuck. Okay. So yeah, and then let's put this uh, below everything. Okay, cool. So now I can just kind of better see what's going on here. And then, hey, hey, Java, Java, where are you? What's up? What's up? Come on up. Come on up. Come on up. Come on. Come on. You can jump. You want to jump straight up to there? Here, dude, I can see what you want. So this is Java. My little, she's our little bobcat. Oh, we just picked her up. <laughs> but uh, she likes, I actually have a little bed set up on the desk that she <laughs> likes to sit in while I work as I am fighting out. And I love it so fucking much. Okay. So realistically, um, do, do you want to stay in that bed or do you want to? She's on me right now. What's up? Mm, what's up? What's up? What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Go up into the cat. Go up into the bed. There we go. Thank you. Okay. So now then, let's do this. Okay. Uh, so I, I do need to figure out names for things. I'm going to update this table with the more names. Because um, there's a lot. Mediterranean. California, so this would be M E C A Mecca. Um, oh, what just, what just happened there? What? That was weird. I don't know why that switched. Uh, Mediterranean California. We do have the Sonoran Desert. Basically, I'm just trying to get um, all of this stuff is just meant to be like different regions that I'm referring to. Uh, so this is going to be the Texas Louisiana coastal plain. Uh, okay. Texas L O U I S I N A coastal plain. Um, yeah. So yeah. <coughs> I need to actually update all, a lot of this. Okay. So one is going up into that whole area. It's encompassing the Sonoran Desert, basically stopping along the Western Sierra Madres. So Sierra Madre uh, Occidental, because um, Oriental is the east. And then, yeah, and then coming down into here, it's stopping on the Western Pacific Coastal Plains, Hills, and Canyons. Ah, uh, so it's where the warm deserts transition into... Okay, okay, I see, I see. It's actually pretty crazy that these regions are following these uh, this geography so well, because it's not... Um, in the east... Um, it stretches to the east before uh, countering... Uh, 
south before reaching. Let me see if there are some other biogeographic regions that I'm already using. Yeah. So it's going into the Sonoran province, but based on this overlap, we can see that it's really stopping alongside the uh, Western Pacific coastal plains, hills, and canyons before reaching the Western Pacific coastal plains. I'm just going to say plains. Uh, I think that's easiest. So it does kind of stretch into here a little bit. Um, realistically, that is what region one is encompassing. Um, so region one is primarily the deserts, uh, the Sonoran Desert. Yeah, that's all. I, it's actually kind of a surprising how few times that the uh, Baja pulls out. Okay, so now region two is, is it basically just the Sierra Madre Occidental, the TVMP, and then the Bajas, no, no not Bajas, Bosas Basin? Balsas, I think. Balsas. Balsas Basin. Perfect. So right now what I'm doing is I'm just describing the geography. Uh, I kind of do, there, there's got to be a better word for it, but I call it typewriter writing. What I do is I go through and I write one thing, then I go through it again and write another thing. So the next thing will be uh, how much, what was the diversity in the region, what are indicative species, which is something I need to figure out. So region two encompasses, encompasses the Sierra Madre Occidental, the um, Mexican, I think for the, where the where it says Mexican High Plateau, oh, sorry, I think I am just referring to that as, wow, so it's actually crazy because these regions are fitting way better. These regions are fitting really good really well better than the other regions that i was using i think these are the epa eco regions uh this one the transversal neo-volcanic system i am going to refer to as the trans mexican volcanic belt the trans so a lot of this stuff is like the same thing um but i am it's, it's a kind of a mixture of geography as well as not geography that I'm going through. So some of these are consistent between them. So like, for example, this one, which is the, is this what I'm thinking it is? Yeah, Sierra Madre Oriental. Uh, those are, that's pretty consistent. Um, and the Trans-Mexican Volcanic Belt. Um, it is bordered... Is bordered on its western flank. Basically, I'm trying to make these regions uh, geographically oriented by the Pacific Lowlands, because that's realistically what's going on. Um, to its south by the Balsas Basin and Sierra Madre del Sur. And to the north, to the north by the Chihuahuan. Desert, and let me just see if there's anything more specific. Nah, it's really about the same. To the west. By... It's crazy how well these are fitting. Oriental, by the Sierra Madre Oriental. And what is this right here? What is this? And uh, is that Tomolipas? See, no, wait, right here. What is this? I want to know what this sick, what this green is. Oh, that's right. This has been a weird one for me. Hmm. Okay. 
Uh, hold on, hold on one second. I need to see this better. Humid. So the Gulf of Mexico coastal plains. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to go with. And the Gulf of Mexico coastal plains. Okay, so that's, that's what I'm basically doing is just adding this in. So what you can see here is that these are a little bit more fragmented than the biogeographic regions want to make it seem like. So they are splitting. I mean, you can see how closely they follow it. Like it's, it's, they're following each other pretty well. So some of these are established regions, but unfortunately ones like this, uh, the, I think this is like the Veracruzan. Veracruz is what they're calling it. The labels are all messy for some reason. Um, yeah, it's like the Veracruz province is what I'm calling this big green thing. Uh, if you look at the actual ecoregions, they're split up into multiple more. So you have kind of down here the Sierra, uh, what is this going to be called? The humid Gulf of Mexico coastal plains. Um, okay, yeah, I don't give a fuck. Um, and then up here, it's just more Gulf of Mexico coastal plains. Um, and then the Yucatan is always a little bit different. Um, so I'm just keeping these, uh, keep kind of doing them both and trying to get the best patterns of both. So, jacards, squamates, okay. So, that's all I'm doing there. Um, I don't really think I need to add anything else. <laughs> this one's just water, that's funny. Um, okay, so now let's do, and I'm trying to keep them region three. Sometimes I combine the regions together if they are particularly large. Um, so this is the Chihuahuan Desert, region three. I mean, that's just the Chihuahuan Desert, region three. Desert. <gasps> the Chihuahuan Desert. The Chihuahuan Desert and portions of the um, yeah Texas. I'm just gonna do TXLA. TXLA coastal plain. Um, to the west, it is bordered by the uh, Sierra Madre Occidental, um, and terminates and to the south is by the Sierra Madre Occidental. Uh, I don't know if that's totally correct. Wait. Um, so the Sierra Madre Oriental starts like up here in this red part. Bordered by Southern Okay, there's really not much to say here. Um, uh, yeah, so I, I'm trying to keep this pretty simple. Okay, yeah, region four will be pretty easy. Region four represents the Texla coastal plain. Represents the northern. Still plain. I actually grew up around here. I've done projects here before. It's crazy to think that old projects of mine are representative of this data set. Um, but yeah, let's go to region five. Okay, region five is pretty clearly clustering on this. What is this exactly? Western Pacific coastal plains. And that's part of the Pacific lowlands. Okay, so region five is clustered around the Pacific lowlands um, with the I'm a little confused as to what this is then. Wait, 
is that am I just dumb and they're not actually any different? No. Yeah, see he has like different ones here. So these are the Western Pacific Plains and Hills versus the Coastal Plains and Hills. The Pacific Lowlands. Uh, the Western Pacific Coastal Plains and Canyons. I'm writing these out full. I'm probably going to have, um, not spark notes. Um, Acronyms, there we go. And then I need to look into each of these a little bit more in depth. So right now it's just like, what do the results show? Okay, so next would be, um, yeah, so it is border to the west, to the west by the Sierra, oh, northeast. East by the Sierra Madre Occidental. It's the Western Mountains. Occidental. Oops. To the north by the Sonoran Desert. To the north by the Sonoran Desert. And to the and to the south by the trans. I would say it's the trans Mexican is it that trans Mexican volcanic belt that's doing that or is it the western pacific coastal plains this needs a better name western pacific but versus the coastal plains hills and canyons wait western pacific plains and hills pacific Okay, cool. Uh, okay, so now read six. So yeah, this is a really shitty manual thing that you have to do, but it is what it is. Okay, region six is over here, and it's really just, so this is dry. It's really just the Gulf of Mexico coastal plains and hills. Region six. Hi. You going up to your bed? Yeah, she is. <laughs> Gulf of Mexico, coastal plains and hills. Uh, it is bordered to the east by the Sierra Madre Oriental. I think um, Java, come here. Come here. Yes, you're getting love. You want to sit up in my lap? Java, oh, stop playing coy with me. I'll give you that love you need. This cat's actually a really good working cat. I worked yesterday with her, and she, uh, sorry about that. I know that's scary. I know it's scary. Mm. Oh, yeah, she's chill as hell, though. She sat in my lap for a few hours, and then she just sat up there in the evening. Perfect cat, perfect cat. Okay. And to the north by the Texas LA, LA Coastal Plain. Okay. Um... So this is where it turns into the humid Gulf of Mexico. So up here, coastal plains and hills, humid Gulf of Mexico, plains and hills, humid. What? So then what is this down here then? 
let's hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. What? Oh, but it stops. Oh yeah, that's funny. Um, oh, interesting. So there is a dry Gulf of Mexico. What is going on here? Is there a mountain range? Is there something I'm missing? Stopping around Veracruz. Huh. It is, um, so if I add these over this, you can see that the region six that I'm talking about, um, oh, I clicked the wrong one. Uh, region six is stopping right here around Veracruz, right where it dries up. Um, to the south, it terminates um, around Veracruz, around the dry pocket. I need to double check um, around Veracruz and TPP. This is a dryer uplift. Double check. Um, see it has a geographic barrier. barrier to squats. Interesting. So yeah, it's just super interesting. It's like trying to figure out the patterns that are going on. So you can see that it's following the mountains just a little bit. Um, and then it just terminates where it... Uh, to the south, it terminates around... Um, following Extend past Oaxaca. That extend. Extend past Oaxaca. However, let me see. Uh, that. Skirt alongside the Sierra Madre del Sur. Skirt along the Sierra Madre del Sur. Uh, you can see pretty clearly what's going on here now. So it's basically following this little mountain range. Skirt alongside the Sierra Madre del Sur. Um, before terminating at the. Before terminating. Lowlands, the Chiapas Highlands. This is just so cool to me that phylogenetic information is actually just constrained um, uh, to geography. It's it's just it's just such cool. Like this is the shit I'm really into. And the more I'm looking through my results, the more I love it. Um, okay, so then. Uh, okay, so then region, we need to go up to seven. The way these things are numbered, by the way, is that it's a north-south. So whatever is the most north is region one. The next most north is region two. I think it's like north-south, east-west type of uh, uh, classifying. So if these, like, these two are equal north words, number two and three, but number two is more westward. So therefore, yeah, therefore it is uh, numbered first. So number seven, oh, right here is the uh, Sierra Madre Oriental, yeah. Region 7 is the Sierra Madre Oriental. And, uh, region 7, Sierra Madre Oriental. Um, I I'm just going to leave it at that. Uh, region 8, okay, is largely the Balsas Basin and Sierra in western Sierra Madre del Sur and the Pacific Lowlands. Um, does it terminate around? Is there any weird overlap stuff? Uh, no, not really. Okay. Region uh, 8 is the, is the 
Balsas Basin, Basin, um, Southern, oh gosh, what is the uh, biogeographic region? Pacific Lowlands. Pacific Lowlands. I'll probably end up uh, breaking up these Pacific Lowlands into multiple parts just for explanation purposes because it just extends so far down. And I think I might break it up into like uh, west east. Um, so, but that is for a later date. Um, Western in this Western Sierra Madre del Sur. Uh -huh. um, oh, Region 8 actually incorporates a lot. Hold on. So, I mean, that, that's basically what it's doing. Um, <laughs> TMVP. So I'm curious why region number 10 is pulling out so differently. If we look at region number 10, I mean, even just with that, it doesn't really make any sense. Like, it's kind of just incorporating, hmm, that's so interesting. Um, oh, wait a second. Ah, okay, so region 9 is just the Yucatan. Uh, I'll do region 10 first. So region 10 exists in the eastern Sierra Madre del Sur. No, wait. Sierra Madre del Sur? Yes. TVMP. Um, Terminates to the west in lowland areas um, of the coastal plains. Okay, easy enough. Um, some of them I'm just, you know, some of them I need more information on, but some of them I'm not. Okay, so region 9 encompasses the Yucatan Peninsula, the I don't know if I'm going to keep Mosquito Province or use a different, more geographical term. Uh, uh, mosquito Province, which comes down from the Chiapas Islands. Mosquito Province. Okay, so Region 11. Okay. I, I'm kind of just speed running this at this point. Region 12. Um, to the Mosquito Province. The G U A T U S O. Tamamanca and Punta Arenas. Um, it is 
ordered South by South America. Uh, region 13 is the Guajira. Uh, I will include 16 with 13. Region 13 and 16 um, are the Guajira province and portions and western of the Venezuelan province. Okay, perfect. Region. Region 14. And I'm, I'm numbering these, but they're going to change over time. Um, is the Savannah. Savannah province. Um, yep. Uh, cool. I'm kind of just getting these on paper, and then I'm going to expand on uh, region 15, wow, that just holds, yep. holds the C-A-U-C-A, Coaca, Magdalena, and Chaco, province, uh, region 17, okay, Northern Ecuador. I need to get um for the South American ones. I need to get another uh, sheet like the other one I had for uh, up there. Okay, and I'm just gonna put region 19 is basically the Ecuadorian province. Okay, region 18 and 20 are the Aramo. And then region 19 is the Ecuadorian province. Okay. So it takes a bit of time just to write all this out. Yep. So what I'm curious about, I want to see if there's a good way to, okay, well, let's do it like this. I need to do alternate fills on here really badly so that I can compare the two regions side by side. <coughs> uh, see, that's interesting. <coughs> Region 11 also includes um, you know what, let's uh, let's do this. So symbology, categorized, color ramp. Um, let's do a fill. I think what we should do is do a, uh, a now let's do a line pattern fill. Okay, and then delete all, classify delete all. It got rid of what my style was. Um, boom, boom, boom. Okay, and then classify. Apply. Why aren't you adding in the symbol? Yeah, I wanted it. <sighs> Is it really that dumb, bruh? It added the lines, but all the lines are fucking stupid. Okay, wait. Delete all. Yeah, like, make the lines, like, dumb, bro. Line pattern fill. Line. Color. Just do a dash blacked. Okay. Classify. Oh my gosh! Okay, we can do this manually, I suppose. Right? It just like, it makes the colors the same line, which is so dumb. 
Okay, I need to go to the bathroom really quick. Where's that putty cat? Where's that putty cat? Where's that putty cat? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh. Um. Why? Okay. Um. Let me look this up. QGIS layer style. It's making it all the same. Change colors of different lines. Yep. Look at this tutorial, but um, you know what? Maybe configure the symbol. So maybe it just needs to be on its own. Uh, let's see what happens if we do this. Not terrible. It is going to be a double thing. Maybe we can do it with a simple fill. Okay, we'll get rid of one. Make the fill color slightly transparent. Okay, and now classify all. Delete, classify. Apply. Didn't change in the slightest. Okay. <laughs> so dumb. So, so, so dumb. Okay, whatever. Uh, <coughs> waste too much time on this. We'll just look at it, how it looks. Basically, I wanted to figure out some way to make it show multiple things at once. What's cool is that I, I am seeing that these Chiapas are, like right here, are actually kind of clustering out in both visualizations. So let me get, um, yeah, right, it was here. And then if I do a styles pane, styles, I don't know why it only works. I just need to really understand QGIS. Okay, whatever, YOLO. I thought I could just do this, say open styles pane, but 
set layer scale visibility. That's dumb. Layer CRS export styles. Shit. Wow, it really has been a while since I've done this. Ah. I could do this in R in like a second, but. Oh, that, that's it. I just gotta double click it. God damn it. Okay. Uh, so, really, what I want is symbols, and I want them to be. I think 50 is what we're going for. Apply. Wait. That has changed all of them. So then if I go up to here, and then let me just add in a line. It added it for one. Could I? Nah. OK, anyways. So yeah, Squamate, Jacquard's, Amphibian. I didn't even change it for the right one. <laughs> oh, I'm so mad. Oh, now it has the lines. What the fuck? OK. So yeah, it's just curious that these are also, let me add the labels as well. Yeah, these Chiapas Highlands are uh, clustering right here in the western, eastern, northeast, western <laughs> Chiapas Highlands, um, are also clustering out for both amphibians and squamates. <laughs> but only in the Jacquard's index. Okay. Okay. Cool. I think I'm just going to run with Jacquard's and go from there. So let me look at my, uh, my, let's look at some ancestral state reconstruction. Let's start getting that written out. Um, so basically what I did for each of these is right here. Uh, these are all my starting regions, and I'm doing this cool method called ancestral state reconstruction. More or less, you take each of these regions as a starting point, all the amphibians or all the squamates or whatever, and they're all starting there. And then uh, you say, hey, uh, where did you go? Where, where were you at the last reconstruction? Let me, let me actually open up the results because I'm realizing this is a little hard to explain. So rasp out, these are my most recent ones. Uh, Bayes area, let's start with the squamates because I was just looking at those. So uh, make the view, topology only, most likely states only, uh, display, most likely state in center. So what this is saying, uh, let's find a cool example because I like cool examples. Uh, yeah, here we go. So these scalapras, right? Uh, Scoloporus, uh, Zosteremus, Lineatulus, uh, Lickeye, whatever. All these Scoloporus, they are found in region A, and only A. So these are ones that are, uh, in this case, A is 1. So these are the ones that are found here. Some of them are found here, right? And, well, hey, if Scoloporus, Zosteromus, and Scoloporus, Lineatulus, if they're both in region A, well, it kind of makes sense that you'd probably find them in region A at their most recent common ancestor. Uh, versus, I can't actually zoom in on this. This is really annoying. Um, they are the closely related sibling of these two. Scoloporus Magister, which uh, let me actually pull up a picture of Scoloporus Magister. Just so you know what we're working with. Uh, so the desert, splainy lizard. Uh, so these are up in the Chihuahua Desert. So. Uh, just for reference, where we're looking at right up here, that's where they're at. Uh, pretty big, very, very pretty lizards. And it's saying that these guys are actually located in, uh, let's see here, Scalopers Magister, A, B, C, and E. So that is one, two, three, and five. So that kind of makes sense. So they're found all through this region, right? Or at least they have records that are in this region. They could be just here or just there or whatever, but that's how it works. 
And so they're saying because they're all there, uh, it is somewhat likely that the ancestor to those two, the Zosteromes, Zosteromes, and Lineatalis, is actually here, which is just saying AB. So it's saying that its ancestor was probably here, somewhere in the Sierra Madre Occidental, uh, up into California. So that's really what this is saying. Uh, and what I really want to show, so let me see, if I go to view here, I can do all of these. Um, let's do keynotes only and event nodes only. So there's a lot of just like moving around, dispersals. Wait, can I not have, where are my events? Hmm. Are there any major events here? Unless, what? There's no events. Okay, let's just do keynotes only. Maybe events are not really that important. So, let's see. What does a keynote mean? I think a keynote means that there was a change at some point. I think. Hmm. Well, I also have some other results that can hopefully. So what I did was I created, um, let me go to some outputs. Let's go to Rasper, Rasp. Um, did I put them here? Or did I put them just in outputs? Huh, okay, time to open up R. So I created a function that if we open up the files, this is Rasp, uh, is it? I want to say it's this script. It is this script. Okay. So, booty, 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 rocket everywhere. Okay. So, what this does is uh, I actually want to convert this into a single function. But what this script does is it takes the output file from Rasp. Uh, so basically, not basically, but what I have loaded here, and it summarizes it all for me. That, that's really all this does. Uh, so I'm going to keep all this in there. Let us now rasp out Bayes area. Let's do S. Card. So this loads it in. This um, segments it out because the script is a text file that has a, uh, yeah, just missing things. Uh, so it has like a tree, it has a taxon list, it has results, probabilities. I'm just segmenting them out in this code. Uh, and then I am collecting all the taxon, putting them into an environment that just says uh, basically what taxon was where. Uh, so these uh, species, by the way, are your outgroups. Shit, I should have removed those. Oh well. Um, and then we get a states, ah, uh, no, states data frame, come on now. Okay, states is a, oh, it's currently a character. Hmm, that shouldn't be a character. States is a data frame. Does it work if I just do this? It does, okay. Oh, wait, I don't think I need to... <laughs> I think I see the problem here. I uh, should not have printed that to console one. That's too big to print to console. Okay, so let's remove that. Let's do it without printing to console. Unable to find an inherited function select for a data frame. Okay. Um, oh, 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 oh. Sometimes um, the functions get messed up and it doesn't know where to grab select from, like which package to grab select from. So uh, now this little bit of code creates a data frame of the states. Uh, so I can show you what that looks like. Basically, it says that every node. Uh, what were the ancestors and what was the most likely state. So what that really is, is basically all of these pie charts. Uh, so this is a node right here. Um, if I click on it, this is node 652. Uh, and node 652 has uh, child nodes. 
and child taxon. Uh, the next bit I really want to get and really need to develop a function for is some way to show uh, dispersals and uh, extinctions. Uh, ha! So this is what it's supposed to highlight for me, and I don't know why it hasn't been. So vicariant events, um, and then uh, any extinctions. Ah, we do have extinctions. Global info. So this shows all the extinction events. So basically, extinction means a range extinction. Uh, here's a very simple one. Hemidactylus garnati and Hemidactylus platyrurus. Their ancestral, their, their ancestor, most recent common ancestor, is thought to be in AG, which is like Baja, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So seven. Um, Baja and some area over here. It's kind of a guess. But uh, whatever ancestor was here uh, went extinct. So now it's only found up in A, which you can see by the two surviving taxa. That's all it's saying. It's an extinction. So at some point they may have been widespread, and then they seg uh, segmented out and were uh, only found in 7 and 1, and then eventually 7, that lineage just went extinct. That's it. Uh, so, yeah. So anyways, I have a data frame of that, which I really want to add on there. Uh, number of extinctions, number of uh, dispersal events, you know, that type of stuff. Could I actually get that? Could I actually add that in really easily? States one. That was the wrong, that was the wrong thing. Ah, I meant to do one thing. Okay, let me do a, uh, okay. It doesn't have the results. Okay, that's fine. Um, actually, res, res might? Results. Um, res ten. Let me just see, because it has some like information text at the top. This is just. These are just the species. Did I mean res or did I mean another one? Tree taxon. No. Oh, I meant s. Oh no. Hmm. Oh, S and E are just like the number, like the characters. Start and end. Hmm. I'll get that at some point. I'll figure it out later. Okay, so then this function, this beautiful, elegant, incredible function, can connect the tip labels from RASP to their output phylogeny, take the state data frame, blah, 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 blah. It does some stuff. Um, not wanting to explain all that right now, but uh, it does stuff. And it does cool stuff. So that, basically it re-adds it all to a phylogeny, and then I have another code that will uh, go through and actually uh, basically collapse the phylogeny according to genera. So that's what uh, we are getting there. So now we can summarize by genus. Um, there are other methods that I wanna use in the future to summarize by other metrics, so family, for example, but uh, for right now, it's just genera, and that's fine. Um, I will be ending this and getting some food in just a second. So, let me just run this, and I don't know why, but while I do have QGIS open, I do have a PlayStation emulator open, I do have ChatGPT open, I have lots of stuff open. Okay, but now what I have in, assuming everything ran properly, genus tip range, I have, this shouldn't be running this slow, this is being weird, ah, I have, each genus listed out and their most likely states. So I know that Amiva, which spans these tips, and is found at node 735, which I will show you that on this tree. So if I go to list node 735, let's see here, uh, and let me unhighlight so I can actually see what the fuck is going on here. Down here. This is the common ancestor to the amoebas down there. That's it, MNP, done. And it just lists it out here for me. That way I can very quickly see like, oh, this genus, probably there. This genus, probably there. And these all make sense. Scoloporus, Yuta, uh, the origin of that genera is an AB, so. Yep. It's a cool little function that I put together. So, yeah. Okay, um, I have those results. I need to get some food in me, uh, so we'll stream maybe later, but, you know.